Back to secured credit cards. How in the world do you decide which secured credit card to get? That, believe it or not, is a much easier question to answer than you would think. The first thing I want you to look at is a multitude of websites. There's a bunch of websites. Just Google secured credit cards, and you're going to come up with a bunch of them. Now here's where you got to start doing your homework. If you don't have Microsoft Excel or, or Google Spreadsheets, create a spreadsheet program. The first thing I want you to look at, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different topics, six different topics, uh, seven different topics you want to put down. The first one, the minimum and the maximum deposit. You got to know if you're getting a secured credit card, what you're really doing is starting a new bank account. You're giving the bank some money, let's say $250 up to, you know, $15,000. And they're going to give you a credit card which is going to use the bank account as collateral so that you can't default on the credit card. If you do, they take your money out of the savings account. So the first thing you want to look at is what is the minimum deposit? Now, you may not want to go for the minimum. You may not want to go for the maximum. But let's say, for example, you've got some money, five, six hundred bucks, a thousand dollars, and you want to put it in the bank and earn an interest rate. Well, you can do that and you can get a secured credit card back. So you got to find the first, the secured credit cards. Number first category you want to look at is what is the balance and what do you feel comfortable with? If you feel comfortable with a $250 balance, fine, no problem, perfect if that works for you. If you want to put a little more in because let's say you got to get a credit card and you got to put business expenses on it and you might need $1,500 a month, but then by all means, go with a little bit, a bank that gives you a little bit more flexibility. The second thing, what is the interest rate you're going to be carrying on balances if you don't pay it in full? Some banks go up to 20%, some go down as low as 11% on secured credit cards. My advice always is pay the balance in full every month. That's going to help you get to achieve your goals faster of rebuilding your credit. I don't believe that carrying a balance is good for anybody. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who dis disagree with me that you need to carry a balance and not pay it off every month. If you're going to leave a balance on your credit card over a, a month's period, then keep it as low as possible, maybe $50 outstanding, so you're not getting crushed in the interest. It doesn't make sense to leave a balance, in my opinion. But if you want to leave a little balance because you believe that it, that's going to help you rebuild your credit sooner, keep the balance low, 50 20 30 never more than $100. I would never go more than $100 because then you're just paying interest on money and it's just giving money away and I don't, I don't believe in that. Number two, what is the yield on savings? In other words, when you're giving them the money, what are you getting back for it? They're holding your money, not hostage, but you should be getting something back for it. So let's say you give them $1,000. What's the interest rate you're getting back? Is it 1%? Is it 2%? Is it 3%? Is it 4%? You know, get whatever you can. You want to maximize the return on your money. And here's why. You look at the interest rate you're going to pay to them. You take away the interest rate they're paying to you, and that's going to give you your net interest. In other words, let's say, for example, they're charging 20% on the outstanding balance, and they're giving you 4% back on the savings account. Yeah, right. 2% back on the savings account. Well, then the net interest is going to be 18%. But you want to come out of this game ahead. That's why I say don't carry a balance. So each month, if you have $1,000 in there, you're going to earn interest on the full amount. If you're not paying them interest, then you're making money, or a little bit of money. But it's better than losing money, and it's better than giving it away. So that's the third category you want to look at, what is going to be the net interest. And you get that just by deducting the interest rate you're paying on a monthly balance minus the yield on your savings, which is the, 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 the interest they're paying you on the savings. Number three, the old annual fee. How much is the annual fee? And what's, really, really, what's it costing you? Because if you have to pay an annual fee on a secured credit card of 100 bucks, it's not worth it. But maybe $30 would be a good annual fee. Obviously, no annual fee would be the best. But if you have to pay an annual fee, you know, try to minimize it as little as possible. Cash advance fee. If you, if you don't have to take a cash advance, folks, never take a cash advance on a credit card. There's a separate uh, percentage rate for that, and usually it's exorbitant. If it's... Uh, 3% or 4% and you're really in a pinch, all right, I'm okay with that. But pay it back as quickly as possible. This way you're not caught up in that game of uh, extra interest rate and all this other stuff. So again, your annual fee is a big fee, the uh, cash advance fee. Then you gotta re, here's where the homework starts. You gotta really look at all the other fees they charge. For example, if you make a late payment, what's the fee? Is it a, a set fee or is it a percentage of something else? You never know what you're getting yourself into. Is there an over-the-limit fee? In other words, let's say, for example, you get in a pinch and you need to borrow 500 bucks real quick and that puts you over your $1,000 limit. Is there an over-the-limit fee and how much is it? And then let's say, for example, they give you those courtesy checks and you bounce one of them. What's that fee? 
So you really want to do your homework and look into all those fees before you go ahead and get that credit card. So that's really seven different categories of what you need to look at before you get a secured credit card. And then what you do is you just think about it. Which one is the right one for me? None of them are going to pop out and say, pick me, pick me, pick me. They all want you to have their card. So when you go and you look at the list of secured cards and you start mapping and gridding it out, you're going to see which one is going to work for you. Like I said, there's guys like me who don't like to use credit cards at all, and I only like to use a debit card. And then there's people who need a credit card for business expenses, no matter what they be. Office Depot. Maybe they're going to take a, you know, they need a hotel room, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But, you know, maybe they need to do something on that credit card for business-related expenses. They got to have it, and they need a higher limit. Then there's cards available for them, too. So hopefully that answers your question about how to get a secured credit card. If anybody has a specific an a question about how to get a secured credit card that I didn't address, please send your question to questions at DelutriLawGroup.com or call us at 417-4711. And hopefully we can get to your uh, call today.